the, uh, the ancestry of all humans living today is in Africa. Mm -hmm. And your theory is that there's only one single migration out of Africa? From, the, from looking at the tree, if you look at the mitochondrial tree for the whole, uh, whole human species that's still alive today, uh, you find that most of the branches are in Africa and the roots in Africa. If you look at the rest of the world, it belongs to one twig of the African tree. Now, in order to get the rest of the world with only one twig of the African tree, you can only have one exit. If there were two exits, they would come from different twigs. And so you would see two, two or more twigs outside Africa, but we don't. We only see one twig uh, represented outside Africa, it's so-called L3, and it's two daughter branches outside Africa, M and N. And so from that, we can infer that there was only a single exit. So what you're saying is that you look at the DNAs of, of everyone who, who is not African people living outside of Africa, uh, it comes from this single twig. L3. L3. Yeah, just like that. Right. So from this single migration, where did these people come from? Uh, what year was it? Uh, how long ago was it? Uh, it's possible to d date uh, the age of L3 and it's between 60 and 80,000 years, or even 60 and 90,000 years, um, depending on the method that you use. And um, the, uh, so the exit from Africa is somewhere between, say, 55 and 85,000 years ago. Um, and people are very keen to try and date exactly when it is. And so one of the... Uh, uh, very important date markers which occurred in that period of time between 65 and 85 was the explosion of the Toba volcano in North Sumatra. Mm -hmm. And the Toba volcano is 100 kilometers long, 30 kilometers wide, that's where the Batak live. Yeah. And uh, the, it was the biggest bang of the last two and a half million years. Mm -hmm. And it, it affected populations throughout the world, but it particularly affected populations in India and uh, in, in the book I wrote on this, Out of Eden, um, I suggested that the exit from Africa was before Toba uh, on the basis of the genetics. But this is still a very controversial area, and I think it's an open question still whether it was before Toba or soon after. But it was somewhere around 70,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So based on this, you're saying that there was one single group that came out from Africa, yep. moved down to the southern coast? The south coast, yes. They went, they went from Djibouti to Aden. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm moving the other way. I'll start this, this side here. <laughs> they moved from uh, Djibouti to Aden and then along the South Arabian coast to the Gulf. Mm -hmm. but the Gulf wasn't there anymore because the sea level was right down. Mm -hmm. And then they went round India and Sri Lanka. And uh, from there they went round the Bay of Bengal, mm -hmm. down there, and uh, to the Malay Peninsula. But Southeast Asia then was completely different. Instead of lots of islands and a long, thin Malay Peninsula, it was a big trunk and a foot on the other end. Uh, so and that's called, land. yeah, the block of land. It was a continent, in fact. Um, and that's called the Sunda Continent or the Sunda Shelf. And uh, the people who came out of Africa moved very rapidly towards there because uh, you can tell from the way the tree is structured that uh, they didn't stay in any place for a long time uh, before they moved on. They left colonies all along the route, like in India, mm -hmm. but they went there. the vanguard just moved very rapidly within a couple of thousand years, getting right down to Bali. And so that the ants, well, no, you, you carry on. <laughs> Well I, well, I was going, going, going on to say that the, 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 the ancestors of the um, Orang Asli in Southeast Asia, uh, in, well, in, in the Malay Peninsula, uh, the three Orang Asli groups, their ancestors arrived in the vanguard. So they're descended from the very first people to foot, put, put foot uh, in, uh, in, in this region in Malaya. So when the Toba eruption occurred, wiped out the population in India, but not the population. Yes, in East India, yeah, East India. yeah, yeah. But not 
but not the ones not in Southeast Asia, no, yeah. Not in Southeast Asia, no. and also not, not the ones who didn't leave Africa, the, the ones in Africa were The ones in Africa were fine, mm -hmm. and probably the ones uh, in the Gulf, who settled in the Arabian Gulf mm -hmm. region, they were probably fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, the east coast of India was very severely hit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the reason that it was the east coast of India um, and the volcanoes in, uh, in, in Sumatra is because the wind mm -hmm. was going northeast and it just completely showered India. Mm -hmm. So, uh, some researchers have put the number at 10,000, about 10,000 odd people left in the, in the Sunda? It's difficult to uh, make these estimates. 10,000 is used quite a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a small number. But uh, if you're thinking about the exit population, mm -hmm. it was only about 250. Uh -huh. So it's, 250 people came yeah. out from Africa? Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been more than 500. The reason we know that is because it wouldn't have gone down to one, one line mm -hmm. if it had been a lot more and they'd broken, broken up earlier. So it was a very small population that came out and gave rise to all non-Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes Orang Asli, the Malays, the Chinese, the Indians, uh, the Europeans, Native Americans, the Australians, everybody. Mm -hmm.